In 2020, a virus emerged from China, causing the whole world to shut down. Places were closed, in some cases permanently, and the population had to shelter in place. But here's the thing, I'm a traveler. I was never meant to be cooped up in a box made from drywall and plaster. There's a whole world of new experiences just right outside my comfy little suburban cove. Eventually, things turned the corner. Thanks to modern medicine, I and the rest of the world biologically armed ourselves and reopened our doors, allowing me to explore once more. Sure, the virus is still around, but a little Wuhan bat bug isn't going to deter me from exploring the amazing beauty America has to offer. I'm back and ready to explore. Welcome to Arizona. It's been two years, but at last, a real vacation. And a vacation vlog. So why Arizona? Well, I booked this in the spring of 2021, just when we're coming out of the really bad winter COVID wave. Since I was starved for a vacation and didn't want to put myself at risk, I decided to head to a place where social distancing was very easy. I was outside most of the time where I could minimize my infection to COVID. Then it hit me, the great outdoor majesticness of Arizona. You know, it's been two years since my last vacation vlog, so here's a refresher. Normally things would start out in my room and- All right, so it's the night before my trip. I just got out of the shower, which explains my doofy looking Gen Z hair. It's been two years since I've been on a proper vacation. I mean, I guess there was that little day trip to San Francisco, but uh, let's be honest, it was kind of for work. Finally go on a proper vacation after two years. Between now and then, I upped my vlogging game. You can't see it because I'm currently using it to shoot, but I've upgraded to the Canon R6. It's a full frame camera that can shoot 4K up to 60p while recording in 10-bit 422 color. That's a lot of words, but basically it gives me more leeway in post at, in terms of color grading. And as a result, I get something a little bit more cleaner looking and professional looking instead of, I don't know, whatever potato -y mess a smartphone gives me. And what has almost become a tradition, I got new stuff to make my vlogs awesome. Let's start with this. And sure, the tripod's the same, but what's new is this. I got myself here a little flew ahead tripod and it'll, it gives me nice smooth pan and tilt. And I also got this, the DJI Ronin S. A one-handed camera gimbal stabilizer. I'm using it because I want to make my vlogs look nice and pretty. And upon coming back from Tokyo, I discovered that the camera footage was rather shaky. I mean, you have no idea how many times I had to use post-production stabilization. And another thing about this, <sighs> hold it up nice and neat, and I can put it in my bag. And there's this, the Atomos Ninja V, or Ninja 5. Basically, I hook this up to my camera and I can record high quality codecs. And the result is something out of a cinema camera. And uh, I posted about this on Instagram, but uh, I've also upgraded the drone to this, the DJI Air 2S. Better quality footage, better stabilization, better battery life, and well, all around better really. And it all fits in my big new fancy backpack designed by YouTube's very own Peter McKinnon. Apple Pro Display XDR. Now let me tell you right now, this isn't some bargain bin stuff you get at Best Buy. This is real top-notch designer stuff and this backpack alone sent me back $400. And that's with a discount. Okay, enough jibber jabber, I gotta resume packing.
So here I am at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport and actually no. You see, this is a road trip. Because unlike the last places I visited, Arizona doesn't really have that good of a public transportation infrastructure. I mean, Phoenix does have a light rail system, but that's about it. Ugh, and as for Tucson, oh boy, you'd be lucky if your driver doesn't reek of pot and gas station boner pills. Besides, I've been meaning to take my little German pocket rocket on a true American-style road trip. And, uh, I'm, if I'm being honest, uh, things are kind of off to a rough start. I spent an hour trying to find my wallet, and... Just like Tokyo, I forgot my happy pills. Uh, thankfully, I was only a block and a half away from my house. But the biggest problem was that my phone forgot to go off. I set an alarm for 8 o'clock. I didn't wake up until 10.30. So yeah, this so-called billion dollar company can't even manage an alarm clock correctly. Before I get a bunch of smug Android fanboys in my comments, I should point out that you ain't perfect either. Remember the Galaxy Note 7? You bring that thing in a plane, you put it on airplane mode, and boom! Instant ISIS mode. So, I just got done at a uh, gas station here in Arizona. Gas prices here are cheaper than it, they are in California. As well as housing taxes and maybe insurance. But hey, at least we got Disneyland. So I'm about 200 miles away from Flagstaff. Oh, 188, says, so, says they're on the sign right there. Unfortunately, I seem to have mistimed my trip, and there's traffic in the middle of nowhere. They have the lane closed down to just one lane. I'm hoping it's not all the way like this to Flagstaff, but still, I'm hoping I can make it there by 7.30. Thankfully, the road opened up, and I was able to drive through the wonderful, vast openness of the American Southwest. As I entered Coconino National Forest, the sun began to set, and it was fully black by the time I made it to the outskirts of Flagstaff. Thankfully, I arrived at my hotel safe and soundly. I picked Flagstaff because it's a nice base to see all the stuff Northern Arizona has to offer. And, um, you know what? I can't resist it. I'm going to play the MST3K clip. Welcome to Flagstaff. Oh, thanks. Well, welcome to my flag staff, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Whoa, no. Sorry. I wonder if the locals are aware of that joke. It's a new day here in northern Arizona, and I'm off to the Grand Canyon. And I gotta tell you right now, I am freezing. Some of you are probably saying, oh, why couldn't I have gone in the middle of summer? Arizona in the middle of summer, are you high? Listen, Flagstaff may not be so freezing, but the thing is, I'm heading to Phoenix later, and Phoenix in the middle of summer, nuh uh, ain't happening. Okay, so I'm at the Grand Canyon, and things are off to a rough start. When I was pulled over by a cop for speeding, and thankfully I was let off with a warning. But a bigger problem on my hand is that my drone doesn't want to work today. Ever since I last updated the firmware, something's gone screwy with it. Not that any of it matters. Drone flying is illegal here in the Grand Canyon. Which, by the way, You gotta see to believe.
if you want to end it all, this isn't a bad place to do so. Uh, don't do it, you're in a police contact, the suicide, whatever line, blah, 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 blah. Okay, listen, uh, a bit of an update to that drone thing from earlier. So without a drone, how was I able to get aerial shots of Flagstaff in California? One, some of the drone footage you saw is actually stock footage I downloaded off the internet. And trust me, that's not some compressed footage you saw on YouTube. This is some real deal high quality stuff I paid a pretty penny for. The second answer, I got the drone fixed. It's with the app that I used to control said drone. So I just uninstalled and reinstalled it and boom, it's fixed. You know, not the first time something made in China gave me a hard time. Yep, this canyon sure is grand. Even though I can't use my drone, A, I'm not allowed to, and B, it's broken, as stated earlier. Now, some of you might be thinking or saying, well, if you want aerial views of the canyon, just go on a helicopter tour. Uh, two problems. One, it's too expensive for my budget, and let's just say due to some um, recent events, I'm kind of scared about taking helicopters. So after that, I made the two hour trek from the canyon back to Flagstaff, had dinner at a nice Mexican restaurant, then crashed back at my hotel. And the next day, I did absolutely nothing. I was gonna get in my car and drive all the way up to Monument Valley. I just woke up so exhausted that morning. You know, I was gonna beat myself up for it, but then I remember, I'm on vacation. To me, a vacation is more than just getting out of town and seeing all the sights. Get out of town and just relax and just not care about the outside world. Because if you wake up every day and try to cram as much into your vacation as possible, well, if you ask me, that kind of defeats the point of a vacation. So with nothing better to do, I just stayed at my hotel and vegged out all day. That night, I went out and went to a nice Italian-style pizzeria. I had a nice Napoleon style pizza, and I walked back to my hotel. But not before giving my server a nice tip. Listen, I know the idea of tipping in your country is really foreign and makes no sense. But please, when you come to America, please, please tip. Yes, employers should pay their waitresses and whatnot more. But they don't. That's the problem. And unless a socialist revolution happens, which probably isn't going to happen, always tip 20%. Again, we don't live in a world of shoulds. Just do it. So, so after a day of doing pretty much, well, nothing, I'm in my car and I'm on my way to Sedona. And here's the thing, the road from Flagstaff to Sedona is super windy. So you, you know what that means. Time to put this baby in sports mode and go initial D on that shit. Eh, yeah, quick heads up. As it turns out, initial D music is hella copyrighted, so I can't use any of the actual songs. Thankfully, I found a song that sounds similar in their style, that hopefully won't get me copyright strike. Leave a like if you know where this is from, by the way. Stop, 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 stop. Turns out this song isn't safe from copyright lawyers either. So I finally made it out to Sedona. Of course, had my drone not broke, I'd fly it around, see all the cool rock formations. But no, I guess I'll have to just continue using other people's footage. Now, and uh, I'm shooting this on the uh, DJI Ronin, and uh, forgive me for the stable, albeit imperfect footage. Here in Sedona, lots of great shopping. It's excellent if you're into lots of Native American jewelry and and crazy crystals slash rocks that look pretty, but let's be honest, don't really do nothing. And uh, one thing I'm hoping they have here is a gourmet donut shop called Sedonuts. And um, if there's no place called Sedonuts, then somebody get on it. <laughs> oh, and a uh, bit of an update. Turns out there really is a place here in Sedona called Sedonuts. Look, see, Sedonuts. 
Okay, back to the main vlog. Yeah, this is an excellent place here in Sedona if you want to get some views. You know, I'm looking around, no one's wearing masks and that should worry me, but I'm kind of over being a mask Karen. You know, I'm vaccinated. It's their problem. I'm not the one who has to pay a huge ass medical bill. Okay, before I get a bunch of angry Fauci lovers in my comment section, one, this was after the Delta wave, but before Omicron was discovered, so just calm down. I'm kind of done dealing with anti-vaxxers. If you're not gonna care about your health, why should I? Oh, and uh, if you're ever in Sedona, definitely check out the airport because you're in for some awesome views. I could stand here all day and admire Sedona's beauty. Oh, and uh, if uh, that rock formation looks familiar, well, that's, uh, I think, rock number 72, Wile E. Coyote fell off while trying to catch the Roadrunner. In fact, um, if we listen closely, we might hear him. Ah, the sounds of childhood. And after that bit of nostalgia, the next day, I went to this place. Ladies and gentlemen. The Soup Bowl of the Gods, Crater National Park. As the story goes, 50,000 years ago, an asteroid struck northern Arizona, leaving behind a massive crater. And if I'm being honest, this video just doesn't accurately convey just how big this thing is. To give you some perspective, you can fit an entire 747 jetliner in here, and maybe have room for a city bus as well. Oh boy, even as I film this, I can hear my brother cracking fat jokes about me. Ha 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 ha, you're lucky you're expecting a child, because if not, oh, I'd go super low right now. Uh, NASA, you left the keys inside. Uh, do you have AAA with you? Oh, and uh, one more thing I should point out about C Crater Park. Um, they lift the mask policy, but there's a no furry policy. Why do I say that? Don't worry, I did my research and the furries haven't gotten to her. Yet. So after I was done with Crater Park, I had one more site I wanted to visit. Apologies, you'll have to put up with the uh, guitar in the background. Anyway, I'm here in Winslow, Arizona. Rings a bell? Maybe this should jog your memory. And yes, there's the flatbed Ford. Now, unfortunately, due to copyright reasons, I can't actually play the song, but here's my legally cleared version. Ooh, I'm going to Winslow, Arizona. It's such a fine sight to see. And look over there, a baby and a flatbed Ford. Just look at me. There were also gift shops referencing the Eagles song. And as it turns out, I wasn't the only one trying to dodge copyright lawyers. Uh, I'd like to stay here to check out the uh, petrified forest, but uh, well, it's getting late and I got packed for the second half of the trip to Phoenix. So I'm leaving Flagstaff and I'm on my way to Phoenix. 
so ends part one of my journey and on to part two. Here's the thing. I actually been to Flagstaff before, way back in 2009. But for Phoenix, I kind of am. Well, I never been to Phoenix. I just thought it was just another city that just existed. But upon further research, turns out there's more and more to do there. I mean, I only have three days, so I don't have a ton of time. So it's a two hour drive south. I downloaded an audiobook. Everything will be fine. So, after I was done checking into my hotel, I rested up a bit, and then went out to a restaurant that served New York-style deli. And was it super authentic New York deli? Probably not. Don't worry, I'll rectify that. Much sooner than you think. So after that, I went back out and I did something super awesome. Laundry. Didn't pack enough clean underwear. Oh God, sounds like a throwaway line you hear in a sitcom, but it's true. So after that bit of awkwardness, the next morning I went downtown to eat at a Phoenix Institution Matt's Big Breakfast. But not before sweating my ass off waiting outside for a seat in the middle of the Arizona sun. Keep in mind, this was in November. Oh, and another thing about Matt's Big Breakfast, it's located in the Roosevelt neighborhood of Phoenix, which is home to some of the greatest street art in America. And let me tell you right now, this ain't some hoity-toity Picasso stuff. That's what I like about public street art. It's creative, unpretentious, and unlike an art museum, free. Also, you don't contribute to the fine art tax write-off complex. I mean, come on, will you really pay $3.5 million for something like this? Oh, and uh, while we're on the topic of expensive, dumb art, guess what happened to explode in popularity just when I got back? No, it's not that super idle song. Although, trust me, it is crappy. It's NFTs. And I was gonna say, I hate NFTs. I hate everything they stand for. And before you crypto bros come into my comments saying, oh, it's to help the artist, and oh, the blockchain this, and oh, da 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 da. Listen, I'm friends with actual artists, and they all despise NFTs. While sure, the concept had a lot of great intentions, it was completely ruined by a bunch of tech bros. Seriously, people are spending up to five million dollars on a JPEG. When I can just simply right click it for free. Oh, but the blockchain, the blockchain, you don't own it. Yeah, I know by right clicking and saving I don't own it, but I have all the value of, I'm sorry, value of the original without spending one penny. You wanna show people you have money in flex? Buy a Lamborghini. At least with a Lamborghini, you can get from point A to point B really fast, I might add. Instead of a picture that sits on some random server somewhere, you actually wanna support artists, buy their work, support them on Patreon if they have one, or commission them for artwork. Actually look at these NFTs. They're lazy, it's quantity over quality. Actual artists turn out actual work as opposed to this 
lame turn and burn operation the Bored Ape Club has. This scene from Jurassic Park pretty much sums up everything wrong with NFTs. Um, I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done, and you and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And the sad thing is, they're only growing in more popularity. It won't be long before we see lazy lions and CryptoPunk NFTs on public street art. And... I'm sorry, what? What's going on in Hermosa Beach? Well, at least the homeless here in LA have a place to use the bathroom. Anyway, back to the blog. So I'm waiting for the light rail here in Phoenix and uh, man, let me tell you, definitely ain't Tokyo fast. But then again, that might be a good thing. So once the train arrived, I climbed aboard. Scratch that, I got off the train and waited for another one because a fellow passenger was being quite rude just because I had a camera in my hand, which wasn't recording. And I swung by Phoenix Airport to film the intro to the vlog, which by the way is walking distance to my hotel. The next day I headed for the small town of Scottsdale. So I'm here in Scottsdale and uh, as I look around, it's kind of similar to uh, Sedona. You know, I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff I see in, I saw in uh, Sedona. Basically a bunch of sword selling jewelry, Old West kitsch, and, I don't know, fake energy rocks. And at least in Sedona, you got a lot of beautiful rock formations to look at. Here, however, just a bunch of Mercedes SUVs and Range Rovers. So yeah, as you can tell, I wasn't really blown away by Scottsdale. I guess I was expecting it to be the Rodeo Drive of Arizona. But in all honesty, it's just a slightly less touristy version of Disneyland's Frontierland. Oops. I was so busy vlogging, I didn't even know I ran a red light. You know, one thing I've noticed is that I'm not really buying as many souvenirs. I don't know, maybe because, well, what am I going to do with it? I have enough coffee mugs, I have enough coffee tumblers, I got enough pint glasses, got enough shot glasses. I would like a cowboy hat, but unfortunately they're expensive and the rent went up, so so I'm pretty much screwed out of a good deal. Well, it doesn't mean I can't riff and make little jokes here and there. Ah uh, yes, Monument Valley, the place I would have gone if I wasn't so tired. Big Flop, uh, didn't know he was from Arizona. Uh, boy, that's awkward. Uh, yeah, I'm no Steve Irwin. That's a bobcat, which Big Floppa clearly is not. He's actually a caracal, which is related to the lynx species. But Big Floppa is from Arizona, and I have video evidence. Iron brands, I could totally use these on a steak. No, Bessie, you think I'm done torturing you to death? Guess again. Okay, so I was gonna go to Scottsdale Park, get some stuff done there, but uh, unfortunately, it's under construction. This is so sad. Please support me on Patreon. Link in the description. It's Arizona Doge. I used to run the Red Friends No way. Big flop of plushie. Oh, I'm so getting this. After I was done checking out Old Town, I then went to the Fashion Square Mall. 
yeah, I know malls are kind of a cop-out, but I don't want to spend any more time in the Arizona sun. Besides, I can get some Christmas shopping done in advance. Home is where I want to be, but I can't use the actual song. Papaya, we definitely did not used to be a Disney store. You know what? I give in to corporate overlord Bezos. Let's see what's inside. Huh. Since when did Gordon Ramsay get into health and body care? Casper mattresses. One day when I'm successful, I'll get you as a sponsor. I mean, I'm pretty okay with the mattress I have, but hey, you gotta hustle. You gotta take sponsors you have no interest in in order to stay afloat in the creator economy. Speaking of sponsors, let's thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the mobile game, the uh, bug killer. But having a really bad problem with bugs around the kitchen. Ah, the buttons for the elevator turn blue. Now that's fancy. Since I'm a cooking show, I'll, I gotta do something cooking related, so let's spend some time here. Sur la table. Please don't buy these multicolored whisks. I mean, they are so flimsy. Didn't even hurt. Okay, is this a whisk or a sex toy? Now here's something I could use. Now I don't know what kind of whisk this thing is called, but trust me, this thing is super useful. This will scramble your eggs in a fraction of the time. Toy Temple. Let's see what they have. I know that's coming off as a big hypocritical because I too have some Funko Pops of my own. But the fact that other Funko Pop collectors make it such a huge part of the personality really drives me up the wall and kind of makes me ashamed to buy a Funko Pop of a character I like. <sighs> it's the brony fandom all over again. Oh, and uh, while I'm still in Phoenix, uh, I should point out that I noticed a certain street name and it has to do with a certain popular meme that's going on right now and it's on its way out and the meme will probably be dead by the time this video comes out. But you know what? I can't resist it. Right now, I'm on the corner of 7th and... Camel Bend. Camel, camel. I know I shouldn't call cropped furry porn a meme, but man, the song they really chose for that meme really slaps. So I'm at the Hole in the Rock here in Phoenix and there's said hole and said rock. Okay, I've got to move it along. People want to park here. Now, to actually get up to the actual hole, I have to go up this trail. Not exactly the first time trying to get into a hole was difficult. Please stay on improved trails. This is your idea of an improvement, huh, Phoenix? I almost rolled my ankle coming down that step. Uh, so right now I'm just kind of chilling out here. And the entrance to the hole is right up there. But the thing is, having to carry this heavy backpack and rock up a bunch of jagged rocks is by no means easy. No, so I'm just gonna just chill out here and uh, Get a few cool scenic views of uh, the East Valley. So I finally made it to the other side of the hole in the rock. And I gotta say, the views love it. Now I gotta make my way back down the treacherous rocky path. <sighs> Frick. There are kids here, I gotta keep it clean. All right, I made my way to some of the best views here in Maricopa County, Dobbins Point. And um, by the looks of it, turns out I'm not the only one who brought fancy filming equipment.
Eh, enough chatter. Let's go take a look at the view. Oh, and uh, I should point out that during the 2020 election, the state of Arizona legalized recreational weed. And um, by the smell of things, I think there's a couple uh, of um, law-abiding citizens close by. It's been awesome. I saw some awesome sights, saw some of the wondrous nature Arizona has to offer, but the day's still young. What's next on my agenda? Ugh, gotta head back to the hotel. Ugh, gotta do something about all this. So after that, I went back to the hotel, rested up, and went out and got dinner. Now here's the thing. Unlike my previous vlogs, there really is no famous restaurant in Phoenix. I mean, in Philadelphia, you had De Nix, and here in LA, you have In-N-Out in Zanku. You have a bunch of wonderful Cuban restaurants out in Miami. But Phoenix, you have a lot of great restaurants, but none of them's really um, vlog-worthy, at least the ones I went to. So that's probably why you're seeing a lack of restaurant vlogs in this episode. Speaking of restaurants, the day I left happens to be Veterans Day, and the brunch spot I ate at happened to be super packed. The fact that I was able to grab a seat and not COVID was kind of a miracle. After that chaotic brunch, I then set course for home. Well, as a federal, I crossed the state line from Arizona back into California. So all is done, I can end the vlog and move on with my day, right? Well, not quite. For you see, there is one stop I wanna make in Palm Springs before I head home. Realized something. So when I first left, daylight savings time was still a thing. But over the weekend, daylight savings time ended. Here's the thing, as Arizona does not observe daylight savings time. So when I left, it was the same time in California as it was in Flagstaff. But now that I've come back and daylight savings time's ended, I officially re-entered the Pacific time zone. So in other words, I just time traveled. Weird. Anyway, I got off the freeway and made my way to my final delicious stop. I'm of course talking about Shields Date Farms. One of the best dates you'll find this side of Morocco. Wow, I thought my fetishes were weird. I forgot I'm back in California where I have to wear a mask. Oh, woe is me. I live in a state with a mask mandate. And all we have to show for it is record low hospitalizations from the COVID-19 variant. Oh. Now I want to get a nice box of good dates. Not any bad ones. Trust me. I know a thing or two about bad dates. You know, everything's been crazy for the past couple, two years. There's something about the sound of this fountain right here in the middle of the Palm Desert. It just makes everything at ease. Well, not quite. I gotta go to the bathroom, and thankfully, there's one right in front of me. Of course, I'd like to stay around and tour the place, but uh, this place closes at 5 o'clock, and I gotta get going. This was a fun pit stop here at Shields Date Farms. I got myself some medjool dates, but uh, let me try their famous date shade, see what that's all about. It's nice, fruity, and almost chocolatey. All right, this will keep me full from here to LA. With the date shape keeping me full, I made my way back home safely. And that was my Arizona trip. And let me tell you right now, after two years of no vacation, it felt awesome. 
And once again, despite Omicron, the world's opening back up, tourism is slowly coming back, and I want a piece of the action. Trust me when I say, there will be more travel vlogs of me to come. So, stay tuned.